How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be our week wrap up here at Smetic Performance. And nothing too much has honestly changed on the floor. We have been busy building a lot of 383 and 406 small block Chevys, but all of our big engines are all kind of stuck waiting on parts. Luckily the push rods from Smith Bros will be delivered today for this RHS based engine build and we can wrap up its build series and get it on the engine dyno. Next week we're going to run this motor on the dyno along with that 416 along with the high ram 13 to 1 416. Something we're also going to do in the very near future that I'm excited to tell you guys a little bit about today is since we finally got our 11 degree 260cc cylinder heads back in stock Here's the finished product, unassembled, so you can see how beautiful the chambers are. They're super, super efficient cylinder heads. We want to do some testing with them to kind of show you guys why the 11 degree platform is better than a 15 degree platform and also dispel the myth that a flow bench equals horsepower. So to do that, Shea's personal engine is a 408 cubic inch almost 11 and a quarter to one compression LS. What's the cam size on it? It's pretty healthy. 251, 266. 251, 266 cam with a high ram intake. That motor has previously made how much power with a Victor Jr.? 640 at 6,400 and 563 foot pounds at 5,400 with a Victor Jr. and a quick fuel 750 carburetor that are probably too small for the motor. Yeah, I agree. Right around 630, 640 horse, the 750 is going to run out of airflow. Um, but, so his engine previously made that much horsepower with a 4150 and a stock casting CNC ported cylinder head. So we're going to do some A-B testing. We're going to switch it to a high ram, dyno it with his stock casting style cylinder heads, and then we're going to slap on our 11 degree casting cylinder head and show you guys the horsepower difference. His heads were milled a little bit down to 64 cc chambers. So uh, the last couple days we stayed late and I milled these heads down for him so that they're also a 64 cc chamber. That way our testing is exact A to B. And what I really want, the, the point I really want to get across to you guys is these heads compared to his heads on the flow bench are almost identical. They don't flow that much more than a stock casting cylinder head. A flow bench is only designed so that you can match one port to the other ports when you're developing a cylinder head. It does not equal horsepower though. And we're going to prove that point by showing the heads flowing almost the same numbers. And then when we jump on the engine dyno, you'll see a huge horsepower change. And most of that's because a flow bench is only measuring constant smooth airflow. The valve is hung open a certain amount, the air inertia and the airflow can smooth itself out around the valve and get going very quickly. In the real world, that never happens. In the real world, the air needs to immediately respond as soon as that valve cracks open and accelerate into the cylinder very, very quickly and efficiently. So we're going to do a first test with 11 degree head versus 15 degree cylinder head. Second test we're going to do, I think, is high ram intake versus the performance carbon big, you know, high ram replica style intake manifold. Then we're going to do 93 octane versus E85 on an 11.25 to 1 compression engine. Obviously, a high compression 13, 13 and a half to 1 engine is going to pick up a bunch on E85, but for the guys running lower 10 and a half to 11 and a half to 1, what actual differences are there? Because at that compression, you could still run full timing with 93 octane fuel. So you're not going to gain any horsepower by being able to add a lot more timing. It'll be a better test to represent the added oxygen content in the fuel and what that equates to in horsepower. And then the last and final test is going to be a windage tray deal. We're going to run the engine with no windage tray at all, see what kind of power it makes. Then we're going to install a factory GM 4-inch stroke windage tray. And then we're going to go all the way and get the improved racing billet windage tray with crank scraper combo and see, do those actually make a difference on a 7,500-ish RPM LS wet sump engine? 
So all exciting stuff to come. Probably in the next month or so, we'll start rolling out some test videos, hopefully. Obviously, we got to get caught up at work, and it's going to be on the weekends, you know, after hours testing, but it's all good stuff. As far as engine builds, Shea is wrapping up a 427 small block Ford short block. These have an aftermarket block, all Ford's rotating kit. This one will be shipping out today. And then right after it, we're going to build a Power Adder 406 short block, small Chevy. The Power Adder lineup that we offer differs from our standard short blocks because they come equipped with H-beam rods right off the get-go. And they also have the rings and the bearing clearances adjusted for power adder applications. And we also offer them in tons of different compression ratios. So if you have a blower, NA, if you're running high compression race fuel, at a, you know, kind of like a bracket motor deal. So these are getting popular and they are super nice little mills. All right, short, quick little video for you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next week.